Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Robert Montgomery, Wanda Hendricks, and Thomas Gomez in Ride the Pink Horse. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Most everyone who visits the little Mexican town of Taos makes the acquaintance of Tio Vivo, Spanish for Uncle Lively, the antique merry-go-round which at fiesta time becomes a center of activity. A similar antique carousel provides the title of Universal International Screenplay, Ride the Pink Horse, a violent drama of pursuit and vengeance. And this time we present not only the original star of the picture, but its director as well, Robert Montgomery, co-starred with Wanda Hendricks and Thomas Gomez. Laid in a typical southwestern town, the action takes place at fiesta time, which traditionally calls for music, ancient ceremonials, and colorful costumes. And the job of keeping those costumes new-looking for tonight's screenplay was, naturally, assigned to Lux Flakes. For a studio, you know, well, they can't take chances with expensive costumes. And according to our director star, Lux Care kept those fabrics lovely looking throughout the shooting schedule. Here's act one of Ride the Pink Horse, starring Robert Montgomery as Gagan, Wanda Hendricks as Pila, and Thomas Gomez as Pancho. It's the week of the fiesta in San Pablo, New Mexico. And the little town revels in gaiety. Celebrating tourists jam the hotels and mingle with colorfully dressed Indians and Mexicans on the crowded streets. But one visitor has come to San Pablo for anything but a good time. Leaving the bus station, he's taken a wrong turn and wandered to the edge of town. There, on a vacant lot, is a seedy little merry-go-round. Pancho, the proprietor, is clamoring for customers. Vengan, young ladies, come. Get on the horses and go round. Solamente diez centavos, only ten cents. The most beautiful of all the games. The best of the fiesta. Senor, you ride the carousel? Ten cents. No, I'm looking for a hotel. The La Fonda Hotel, where is it? La Fonda Hotel? Other way, senor. i show you the hotel. Fila, you shut up. What's the matter with her? You. Why are you staring at me like that? I... I show you hotel. Okay. Show me. This... This way, senor. Vila. All the time she says she has dreams. She dreams she meets men. Oh, she and her dreams. That baby. She should be home playing with her dog. Come on, sitting bull. Pick up your feet. Where's that hotel? There's hotel. Over there. Thanks. Please, you take this, senor. What is it? Little door. Carved of wood. My grandmother gave it to me yesterday when I come here so I not be run off. No, I'm not buying any souvenirs. No, no, you don't buy. You keep it. It protects you. Protect me? From what? Take care, senor. Hey, come back here. I don't want your doll. Crazy kid. Yeah. I want to see Frank Hugo. Mr. Hugo's not here. These are his rooms, aren't they? Suite 315, La Fonda Hotel? I said Mr. Hugo's not here. I'll wait for him. You can wait in the lobby. I don't like the lobby. It's too crowded. Who are you? I'm his private secretary. How soon will he be back? I said how... Who are you phoning? Hotel manager. I wouldn't do that. Hello? Give me the... Never mind, operator. Oh, hello. Is Frank in? No. But where's Jonathan? I thought he... Oh. Did you do that to him? He'll be all right. Do you mind my asking what you're doing here? Waiting for Frank Hugo. Well, 
Well, he ought to be here any moment. I'm having dinner with him. Do you expect to join us? Look, why don't you just sit down and stop pumping, huh? I was just curious. Do you mind if I... Shall I answer? You stay right where you are. Hello? No. No, Jonathan's not here. Yeah, this is Mr. Hugo's room. Oh, hello, Mr. Hugo. No, there's nobody here. This is the bellboy speaking. I just brought up some ice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will. That obviously was Frank. Frank himself. Miss Lundine. Oh, hello, Jonathan. The police. Call the police. I, uh, I don't think this gentleman would approve. Your boss just telephoned, Jonathan. He won't be back till morning. Well, that thing stood up with a vengeance. Oh, you're not leaving, are you? Yeah. Uh, when I see Frank, who shall I say drop by? Tell him Shorty's pal is looking for him. Shorty's pal? Yeah. And tell him I'll be back. Ah, hello there, Mr. Gagan. Who are you? Well, my name's Rex, R-E-T-Z, Rex. I don't know you. I know a lot of things about you. You got here on the four o'clock bus from Washington, D.C. Little Mexican girl showed you the way to this hotel. You went to Frank Hugo's rooms, but he wasn't there. Anything else? Oh, little. Let's talk it over in the coffee shop. Sure. Let's talk it over. More coffee, Gagan? No. You've got a real tough problem on your hands, young fella. Now, look, I... I... mean accommodations. Not a vacant room in town. Fiesta's going on. Big nights tomorrow. Lots of excitement. Yeah. Look, you a cop... That's about right. Washington? Mm Mm-hmm. Government cop, eh? My, my. How come you're tailing me, Uncle Sam? Oh, I'm not tailing you. I got in yesterday, way ahead of you. You see, I saw you in Washington run after Shorty Thompson was killed. You were at the inquest, correct? Some inquest. You testified you had no idea who killed your pal. Yeah. The cops and I were equally baffled. Maybe not so much now. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm tailing Frank Hugo. Been watching him for months. You don't watch him very close, do you? You mean you think he killed Shorty? I'll leave the thinking to you, Uncle Sam. I think you're here to square things for Shorty by knocking off Hugo. Go on. Also, you're as dumb as they come. I am, huh? Why, Mr. Hugo's a big man in these parts. He's got a lot of friends in this state. Leave him to us, Gagan. We'll get him. Anything else? Only that I wouldn't like it if Mr. Hugo got you... You're not a bad fella, Gagan. You're like a lot of the boys. All worked up because you fought a war and got nothing out of it but a dangle of ribbons. Now, why don't you let your Uncle Sam take care of guys like you go? How long you been after him? Too long to let anything happen to it now. Be a shame, wouldn't it? Well, thanks for the advice, Uncle Sam. Maybe I sized you up all wrong. Maybe you're after something else. And maybe you're working for Hugo. I told you I work for the government. Doesn't the government work for Hugo? It did all during the war. Sorry, Mr. Retz. I gotta start looking for a room. Please, please don't crowd the desk, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very sorry, but there just isn't a room to be had. Hey, you, bellboy. Any luck? Oh, senor, I telephoned all my friends. No rooms anywhere, but maybe you try Trace Violetta. you find something there. What is that, the Trace Violetta? Hey, huh? saloon, senor, a Mexican part of town. You find Indian or Mexican, they have room and house. Give him a couple of bucks, he move out. Where is this, uh, uh, what you might call it? Where is it? It's very easy to find, senor. I tell you just where it is. Okay. Hey, you. That place there, is that the Trace Violetta's? Yes, senor. Do you know if a... Oh. So it's you again. What are you doing here? I'm waiting. You don't say. I thought I would never see you anymore. Look, Sitting Bull, do you know where I can get a room? A room? Why? To sleep in. Oh, Mamma Mia has a room. You know her? Yes. Where does she live? I don't know. I'm lost. I thought you knew this town. I know where a hotel is because I walked past it, but I've never been to San Pablo before today. I live in San Melo, San Farmer's Okay, okay, okay. 
Now, what are you doing here in front of a saloon? My girlfriend left me. They say I'm too little. Where'd they go? Inside, looking for muchachos. Looking for what? Boys. Oh. Do they know where Mama Mia lives? I don't know what they know. Look, there's something going on inside that head of yours. What is it? Oh, nothing. Nothing, senor. Only I, I don't know what to do tonight. Well, why don't you get yourself a muchacho like your friends, huh? I don't know how. You telling me. <laughs> so long, sitting bull. Hey, barkeep. I want a drink. Si, senor. Si? Whiskey. Big one, see? A big drink. Here. Senor, this money. Well, what's the matter with the money? Too big, too big. No change. That's the smallest I've got. Smallest he got. Such a man, he take my whiskey and he give me this. Cuanto es, eh? Veinte pesos. ¿Qué crees, señor? ¿Qué es el Banco de México? Un momento, un momentito, un momentito. Señor, I will help you. My name is Pancho. I will be your friend. Hey, wait a minute. You're the guy at the merry-go-round, eh? Si, senor. Diez centavos, ten cents a ride. That's me, Pancho. Give me your money. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah? It's uh, 20 pesos, huh? Yeah? It's your 20 pesos. Sure, it's mine. But the barkeeper, he can change only ten, huh? Ten dollar bill, I can change. Twenty dollar bill, too much. Uh, Pancho fix everything. We drink ten dollar. Everybody have a drink. Ten dollar disappear and everybody happy, eh? <laughs> okay, why not? You want to make everybody happy, see? Yeah, sure. Let's make everybody happy. Otra <laughs> botella. <laughs> Tequila for everyone. Ah, amigo, you are the blood of my heart. <laughs> you are true friend. Salud, amigo. Salud. Oh, salud. Salud. Yeah. Vasco, la musica, la musica. Uh, we have pretty music, senor. And much to drink, eh? Uh, big drinks is more better even than music. You got something there, <laughs> Fatso. <laughs> uh, those fellas that play music, amigo, they play because tomorrow we burn Sosobra. Who? Sosobra, god of bad luck. Oh, yeah. He got face even worse than me. <laughs> <laughs> Viva la fiesta! Free drinks for everybody! Free drinks! Hey, Pancho, where are we going? You come with me, amigo. My beautiful amigo. <laughs> you, you got kind of face I like. <laughs> Panchito help you. You help me what? You say you got no place for to sleep. Yeah, well, what can you do about that, huh? Uh, that's the kind of man I like. The sad man with no place. Amigo, Pancho give you most fine place for to sleep in all San Pablo. Now you feel better? Yeah, what place? I show you. I... Hey, you know something? Somebody follow us. Listen. I don't hear anybody. Somebody back in shadow there walk very soft, very... I... It's a girl, senor. Oh, she no good, too skinny. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hey, will you quit following me around? Now beat it. Ah, oh, it's your girl, huh? Uh, I don't even know her. Uh, she show you to hotel this afternoon, remember? Uh, go on, go on home and play with your buffaloes, <laughs> will you? <laughs> ah, them kids. The fiesta bring them like honey. They come for sing, for dance, for to get fella, have good time, then go home and pull plow for another year. <laughs> hey, hey, Skiddle, hey! Oh, look, she gone. Oh, my goodness, where she go? <laughs> <laughs> hey, forget it. Just tell me where I'm going to sleep, will you? You don't know? With me, amigo. <laughs> right there in back of merry-go-round. Yeah, but where's your house? House, senor. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're drunk? It's possible. But never too drunk for no my own house. Here, the palace of King Pancho. That fine roof, senor, see? <laughs> it's fine walls, too. It's a shed. It's falling to pieces. Uh, two mattress, amigo. One for you. Yeah, thanks. Well, I've slept on worse, I suppose. Hey, 
You own that merry-go-round? I Pancho own everything. Twelve beautiful horses, three beautiful chariots, all ponchos. Hey, you drink pretty good for gringo. Yeah, and you talk too much. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> uh, so long Pancho got somebody he can tell. Amigo, I love you. That's enough. They can keep everything else, keep the whole world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> See, amigo. Senor. Are you still here? What do you want, huh? You want a ride? Is that it? Yes, I want to ride. Merry go round. Hey, Fatso, you got a customer. Oh, all closed. No more customer. Come on, come on, get up. No, no, no ride. It's too late. Turn it on. Oh, merry go round for skinny kid. Hey, where is ten cents? There's no free rides. It's a rule. Okay, here. Ah, muchas gracias, senor. You, kid. You ever ride one of these things before? No, senor. Well, get on, get on. Which one I should get on? Or which horse? Why don't you try the pink one? Okay, Pancho. Let her go. <laughs> Senor, look. Okay, sitting bull. Why don't you give us a war hoop? You know. Senor, I lie. Hey, Pancho. She likes. Hey, what are you doing? I turn off, that's all. One ten cents is one ride. Okay. Now beat it, kid. Scramble. Go on. When it's not just then, you're grassy. Yeah. Uh, that skinny kid. Fortune teller, I think. How do you know? A crazy dress she wear. To so many charms for good luck. You know, this afternoon she'd give me this doll. What is it? Ah, Ishtam. The good goddess. Good for what? Good for keep away debt. Very good charm. I got a better charm, Fatso. See? Oh, big gun, huh? Why? Best charm in the world. Keeps away the boogeyman. <laughs> Senor, wake up. Oh, what's the matter? Who? Oh, brother. Wake up. Someone is coming. Who? Who's coming? Over there, senor. By Merigoram. Someone is hiding. Gagan. What do you want? It's me, Rex. I got to thinking maybe we ought to have a little talk. I got a couple of new ideas. We had a talk, Uncle Sam. And I sort of hinted that I didn't want you removing Mr. Frank Hugo from the scene. Well, I'm not worrying anymore about Mr. Hugo. Why not? Because of the way you're handling it. Walking into that hotel room and saying Shorty's pal is looking for him. <laughs> Playing it tough, huh? Well, there's a friend of Mr. Hugo's named Locke. Mr. Locke's got a couple of bad boys out looking for you right now. Does that interest you? Yeah, kind of. I got an extra bed in my room. You'll be a little more comfortable there. No, I'll stay here. Have it your own way, Gagan. Kind of figured I'd be wasting my time. Hey, rats. Now, what is it? Thanks. Don't mention it. It's your funeral. We'll present Act Two of Ride the Pink Horse in a moment. You know, Libby, it's encouraging to see the film industry tackling a controversial question as Daryl Zanuck does in Gentleman's Agreement. Some mighty fine acting by Gregory Peck went into that story of present-day intolerance. And I was especially interested to see Celeste Holm, the musical comedy star, in a straight dramatic role. And most attractive, too. 20th Century Fox designed some gorgeous clothes for her to wear. Well, after all, as a fashion editor, she had to look the part. But, you know, she was so enthusiastic about the clothes she wore in Gentleman's Agreement, she had most of them copied for her own wardrobe. At a fraction of what the originals cost. Do stars care about economies? Well, I should say they do. They know all the tricks, like luxing stockings to make them last longer. A trick smart girls everywhere use. That's because why... it really works. That's why Celeste was so furious one day when she tore her nylons on an electrician stand on the set. Her maid had lavished such loving luxe care on them they'd worn for ages and ages. And there was still lots of life left in them. 
Well, of course, Lux can't protect stockings from splinters, nails, or sidewalk falls, but it does cut down those needless runs that seem to pop for no reason at all. Runs that actually come from using a strong soap or rubbing with cake soap. These gradually weaken the delicate threads. Now, with Lux Flakes, nylons last twice as long, and a famous laboratory actually proved this by strain tests. Lots of girls have discovered that for themselves, John. Yes, indeed. So it's wise never to take chances. Keep a big box of Lux handy. Give stockings nightly Lux care and see how much you save. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act two of Ride the Pink Horse, starring Robert Montgomery as Gagan, Wanda Hendricks as Pila, and Thomas Gomez as Pancho. It's early the next morning. In Pancho's dilapidated lean-to, the young man named Gagan has just awakened. A dozen feet away, staring at him, is the unsmiling Mexican girl, Pila. Well, now, what do you want? I asked Pancho if you have water to wash. He says no. I bring you. Service, eh? Well, bring it here, bring it here. Hey, that's very fine bucket. You sign of good luck when you find a bucket full with water. Why do you have to look like that? Like what? Like you come out of a sideshow. Sadjo? It's a place where they keep freaks. I look like freak. And that get up, you look like zip. What is it? Well, maybe it's the dress. This is my grandmother's dress. I never had so nice as this. Well, take off some of them spangles and comb your hair. My hair? It's not dry. It's all right for mice to sleep in. Here, here's some money. Take it and get yourself a permanent wave or something. No, no, I can't take the money. Go on, take it. Make yourself look human. You like me if I look human? Look, sitting bull, just move on. Disappear. Beat it, will well, you? All right, I go. I go. Amico, uh, you crazy for waste money on the stick. Fellow, fellow like you can get princess. I've had princesses. Hey, where you go? To the hotel. I'll see you around, Pancho. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hugo. Gagan, well, come in. I understand you were looking for me yesterday. You all alone? You mean Jonathan? Among others, yeah. Others? Oh, yes, Miss Landine dropped by yesterday, too, didn't she? Well, I assure you, we're alone. How's our friend Mr. Retz? I hear you've been talking to him. What would I have to talk to him about? He's no pal of mine. But Shorty was, huh? Shorty Thompson? That's right. Shorty was a nice guy. Gave him a good job when he got out of the army. Too bad he turned out to be a crook. He learned fast, huh? <laughs> Come now, Gagan. Shorty was the kind of crook nobody likes, not even me. And I'm rather broad-minded about such matters. You see, Shorty tried blackmail. He had something you wanted. Eh? Yes, and he wouldn't give it to me. You had Shorty killed, Hugo? Let's just say he lost an But you never got what you were after, did you? No. No, because I've got it. A canceled check for $100,000. Signed by you and made out to a guy who was making patriotic speeches about the time Shorty and I were getting a tan in a place called New Guinea. You sound like a disillusioned patriot. Is any doubt in your mind that I have the check? The number is 6437. All right, Gagan. Shorty had his price. What's yours? 30 grand. Your pal only asked for 15. The extra 15 is on account of Shorty. A real friend. Do I get it, Hugo, or do I turn the check over to Mr. Retz? He'd be awful happy to get a hunk of evidence like that. <laughs> you know something, Gagan, I like you. We eat out of the same dish. Nerve, lots of nerve. Do I get the 30 grand or do I drop it on you? I'd be a sucker to start paying blackmail. You might keep a photostatic copy of the check. Then I'd have to pay you again. I have nothing for my 30 grand except the headache. 20 years in the jug for stealing from the government. That's also a headache. You know something else, Gagan? I'm getting tired of having that check haunt me. I'll give you 15 grand. 30. 30 grand? Oh, well, I came down here to enjoy the fiesta. I'll charge it up to pleasure. You'll uh, want it in cash, naturally? Right here in my hand. Well, give me time to round it up. Say, 7 o'clock tonight. Where'll you be? Any place, as long as there are people around. People? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. You know the Tip Top Cafe? I'll find it. I'm having dinner there with a few friends. Just uh, bring that little item with you. You'll get the check when I get the dough. <laughs> me too, Gagan. I wouldn't trust my own mother. Tip Top Cafe, 7 to night. Oh, 
Oh, hello, girlie. What are you doing in the hotel? Waiting for Mr. Gagan, huh? He went upstairs, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know something? He's in trouble. I know. You know what? But soon he will die, maybe. Yeah? Well, how do you figure that? I saw him. I saw him dead. Oh, now, wait a minute. You you mean you had a dream, huh? No, I saw it. Yesterday afternoon, he came by Merigold looking for hotel. I see his face. Dead. His eyes are closed and his skin is white. He's dead. Well, do you see many people like, like that, dead? My grandmother says I've seen things other people do not see. I don't think so. But this man I do see. Dead. You could be right, you know. Anyway, I'm trying to help him. Hiya, Rats. Oh, hello, Gagan. I was just talking to your friend. She's uh, quite... Well, where'd she go? <laughs> Over there in the corner. She must be scared of me. Is Hugo scared of you? Come again? Now, look, Gagan. I'm after Hugo. I've got a hunch you've got something on him that'll help me send him up. I don't know what it is you've got. But chances are ten to one, you'll wind up just like Shorty. Now, I'm asking you officially to tell me what it is. Uncle Sam can handle Hugo. You tell Uncle Sam to take a walk for himself. Okay, I've spoken my piece. I've heard enough pieces, too. They just don't register anymore. I'll be around, soldier, if you change your mind. Well, look at you, sitting bull. You've been to a beauty parlor, huh? Do you like? Do I look human? Oh, brother. I fix dress, too. What else should I do? You've done everything. Are you hungry? It's a little early, but we could have some lunch here in the hotel. No, no, I, I can't. Well, a restaurant can't hurt you. It's not going to bite you or scalp you. All you have to do is to pretend you're a human being. Come on. Well, don't just look at it. Eat it. It's a fruit cocktail. It's good. He smells very nice. Look, I, I saw it on dish. It's cold. Yeah. Ice usually is. <laughs> you keep laughing at me, I'll go away. Nobody's laughing at you. What a goon. In San Melo, where I live, ice is very hard to get. Everything we put down the well by a string. And Mr. I... Gagan, I must talk to you, Mr. Gagan. Miss Lundine, eh? Well, go ahead and talk. It's very important. I've only a few minutes. You said you put things down the well by Please, a string, Mr. huh? Please, Mr. Gagan. Couldn't we go to another table? No, we couldn't. The lady and I are having lunch. All I'm asking is three minutes, but they're very important minutes to both of us. Okay. Go on over there to the table, sitting bull. Go on. My name is Taylor. Yeah, that's fine. Go on, over there. All right, Miss Lundine. Frank Hugo, tell me what you're doing. You've no reason to believe anything I say, but you can't lose by listening. I'm listening? Frank's very clever. He's seen to it that I have everything I want, except money. With money, I could get away from him. Well, here's my chance. To get what I want and get you much more than $30,000. How? Don't give him that check. We'll find a lawyer. Put the check in a sealed envelope and tell the lawyer if anything happens to you or me, he's to send it to the FBI. Then you tell Frank what you've done and ask for 100000 No. Don't you see? It's more than the money. It's the only way you can keep alive. I'll keep alive, all, all right. All right, you're not afraid. But why not get more? It's so simple. For one thing, I don't trust that lawyer we'd hire. We'd find an honest lawyer. Hugo buys them all. But he won't know who this one is. You'll know. Oh, I see. And, of course, you can't trust me. Right. Then do it yourself. I'll trust you. You're a smart cookie, aren't you? No. I'll do it my own way. You're being so foolish. Maybe. I'll buy you a drink, though. What do you have? I can't. Frank will be looking for me. I'm sorry I intruded. I'll come back now? Yeah, come on back. She make you feel bad? She's very beautiful. Yeah, and the dead fish where our heart ought to be. I've known a lot of them babies. She's not a baby. Look, do you understand what a human being is? Yes. Well, they're not human beings. They're dead fish with a lot of perfume on them. You touch them and you get hurt. You do not like her? No. My friend Maria is like that. Because they bought her a new pair of shoes and she wouldn't wear them in front of him. But tonight, the dance she wear them in front of other men. I told her she shouldn't be like that because Jose bought them for her. And she should wear them for him because a man doesn't like a girl to always go barefoot. Eat your lunch. I got some business to attend to. Business? At the bus depot. A little piece of paper I checked in a locker. I think maybe I'll be picking it up. I 
trust your dinner is satisfactory, Mr. Hugo. Yes, everything's fine. We want some more wine. Yes, sir. I'm glad everything's fine, Mr. Hugo. It's 7 o'clock. Ah, Giga, nothing like being on time. I believe you've met Miss Lundin. Good evening. My friends, Mr. Locke and Miss Dutton meet Mr. Gagan. How are you? Great. I'm afraid you'll have to wait a few minutes. The bank messenger's a little late. You uh, all set with your end of it? Yeah. He's scared stiff. I'm going to stand him up. Why don't you wait at the bar? Why the bar? There's plenty of room here. I prefer Mr. Gagan at the bar. Don't be silly. Besides, I feel like dancing. After all, it is a fiesta. Your squab is getting cold. Keep it warm for me, will you, Frankie? Now, look. Mr. Gagan, would you mind <laughs> dancing with me? Frankie would rather eat. Thanks, Mr. Gagan. I've been furious at you all afternoon. What did I do? You've cost me both a fortune and my freedom. I don't know why I feel this way about you. Oh, I'm not making a pass. I'm just being silly. I... Don't stop. Frank's watching us, and I have something to tell you. We'd better go out on the terrace. Okay. What have you got to tell me? Frank Hugo has no intention of giving you that money. No? He's figured out one of his typical tricks. He's... Can anyone see us? We're the only ones out here. I shouldn't be telling you this. You certainly haven't done anything to deserve it. But there isn't any bank messenger coming. There's someone else. Who? And why Stay should he... Water, Gagan. Don't move. All right, Eddie. He's got that check. Get it. <laughs> the knife. Use it now. Police, Sergeant Hughes. Now, this is Rats, Treasury Department. Oh, yes, Mr. Rats. How you in town? I'm at the Tip Top Cafe. There's been a little trouble here. A couple of guys tried to knife a fellow named Gagan. I got them both. One's dead. But Gagan's disappeared. There's a trail of blood leading out to the street. We'll be right over. Thanks. I got an idea there'll be others looking for Gagan, too. I'd sure like to find him first. Thank you. Pancho, come quick. You, Pila, what you do here? There in your house. I bring him there. Who? Who you bring? Your friend, Americano. He hurt very bad. Knife in the back. Aye, knife. I find him in park. Blood. So much blood. Stay with Mary go round. Stay with the kids. Yes. Hey, Pasaki. Amigo. Oh. Que sangre, blood. There's a knife. My back. I fix, amigo. I fix. Oh. A knife is good, amigo. More easy to fix. I got knife three times. When you young, everybody stick knife in you. <laughs> Here. First take big drink. Tequila. Pretty soon you are more better as before. <coughs> Had to drink long time. Ay, que lastima. She help you, eh, Pila? Yeah. Get it out. The knife. That's one good kid. Now, amigo. Now. Ay, <laughs> now we wrap up. Very tight. <clears throat> Very tight. Hurt you more, but it's best. <laughs> yeah, Pancho fix, amigo. <clears throat> Pancho fix good. <laughs> How you feel? I passed out, huh? You leak so much blood before. Give me my coat. Sure, sure. A coat, pretty bad torn. I don't think we can fix. Inside pocket. Give me the wallet. The wallet. Uh, he's here, all right. Gun. Give me the gun. Uh, no gun, amigo. He's gone. Now you don't need gun. You got Pancho now. I can stay here, huh? A little while. As long as you want. Amigo, I better go watch Mary Goran. I come right back, amigo. Right back. Pila, what you wave hand at me for? Pancho, look. Men. Two men over there. Two men? Hey, they look bad guys. They are after him. Quick. We go get him. We hide him. Merry go round. We put him in chariot. You sit with him, see? They don't find.
Sancho, he does not talk. I think maybe he's unconscious again. Never mind. You sit with him in chariot. You have big skirt for cover him up. Eh? Quick. Make a go on, Pancho. Hurry. You kids, muchachos, come back. Everybody gets free ride. Everybody, get on merry ground. Free ride, free ride. Jump on. Hey, you. Come over here. Me, senor? Uh, what do you want? He said, come here. What's the matter? Your name Pancho? Si, senor, Pancho. Where's Gagin? Gagin? Who is he? The fellow you met last night in that saloon. Oh, him? Last night, I pretty drunk. I don't know nothing. <laughs> oh, please. I don't know nothing, senor. Cut the line. Ah. Where's Gagin? <laughs> oh, my. You hurt Panchito. He was heading this way. I don't know. If I know, I tell you. <laughs> I don't know nothing. Keep working on him. Where is he? Ah. Where's Gagin? Uh, oh. uh, Pancho, Pancho, they beat you, so. Uh, he's all right. They're gone. I chase kids home. Just us now. He told me what they did to you. Uh, they tell me your name. Pleased to know you, Mr. Gagin. They want to know where you are. I don't know. Boom in the nose. I don't know. In the mouth. I don't know. Kick in the stomach, but I don't tell. Thanks. I told you, Pancho, he very proud man. I'm going to cut you in, Pancho. Money. A hat full. You got hat full of money? I'm going to get it. Yeah, lots of people's going to get lots of things, but they never don't. This, this time I'll get it. No, no, don't move. You're very sick. I'm not going to get any better if those guys come back here. I know who sent them, and he won't stop looking. We will go to San Melo. You'll be safe. Where's that? On the bus, two hours. It leaves at 10 o'clock. More than an hour yet, huh? Well, we can't wait in the bus station. You go to the Tres Violetas. You punch your friend. They remember. Take him, Pila. Now. Tres Violetas. <laughs> Hello. This is Lack. No sign of Gagan, Frank. You mean the cops have found him? No, they haven't found him. They're all over town, still looking. Find him, do you hear, and get that check. We got everything covered. Railroad station, airport, bus depot. Well, try those Mexican saloons. That's where he was yesterday. A joint called Tres Violetas. Get over there right away. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. We'll return with Act Three of Ride the Pink Horse in a moment. Acting in a mystery film these days is a very strenuous experience because the public has come to expect realism even in the most harrowing scenes. Secret Beyond the Door, Diana production story of intrigue and murder, more than comes up to their expectations. For instance, in the storm scene, Joan Bennett and a group of party guests were blinded by rain and deafened by the roar of a violent summer squall. And yet our guest tonight, blonde, blue-eyed Pat Alphen, tells me she would love to have had the experience. I meant I'd be thrilled to play opposite Michael Redgrave, Joan's handsome new leading man, Mr. Keeley. That is, someday. Right now I'm still going through a training course at Universal International. Have you been directed by pistol shot yet? Oh, I haven't been that bad. Well, <laughs> that's not quite what I meant. That's the way the storm scene was directed in Secret Beyond the Door when the sounds of the storm silenced even the director. I remember that scene and was so disturbed when I saw Joan's lovely so summer formal about to be drenched. But then they told me it had already been luck for several retakes. I suppose that's an old story to John Kennedy. But one that never loses interest. Hollywood wardrobe departments count on Lux Flakes to see them through all sorts of washing problems. They discovered long ago that Lux is safe... Or anything safe in water. That's what Joan Bennett said. You know, she's famous in Hollywood for being a wonderful homemaker. 
She told me that Lux Flakes has been a standby in her household for years. She has three daughters at home, you know, so you can see that her mate has plenty of use for Lux Flakes. And Lux Care really does keep nice things lovely longer, Pat. Actual washing tests showed that Lux things stay lovely up to three times as long. You can come to grief with colors if you use wrong washing methods. Dresses and blouses fade, look drab in a short time. But Lux things stay lovely up to three times as long. Thank you for coming tonight, Pat Alphen. Back now to our producer, William Keeley. Act three of Ride the Pink Horse, starring Robert Montgomery as Gagan, Wanda Hendricks as Pila, and Thomas Gomez as Pancho. In the town of San Pablo, the fiesta is at its hilarious height. It's a night of raucous gaiety as the costume merrymakers jam the decorated streets. Desperately, through the throng, Gagan has staggered to the Tres Violetas Cafe, Pila struggling to keep him on his feet. His wound has stopped bleeding, but Gagan is barely conscious as the bartender leads them to a little room. You keep him in here, Pila. Nobody see you here. He's so sick. See, but somebody come in and they think him drunk. Everybody get drunk tonight anyhow. Here, I leave bottle of beer and put sombrero on his head. He fall over table, nobody see his face. Gracias. Ah, big fight, huh? Si, we go to the bus later. Está bien, I close door. Senor Gagan, can you hear me? They try to kill you. You, you want to know why? Because they are bad. And... And I'm good, huh? Yes. I will take care of you. You. You're, you're just like Shorty. No brains. Don't talk. Don't talk. It hurts better now. It's hot in here. Hot in the jungle, too. Rain turns to steam. Oh, please. You must not go to sleep. No. Okay, Shorty. Okay. Shorty. We said no, it's Pila. Pila. I got something for you. In my wallet. Here. Check. Keep it, Shorty. Hang on to that check. Don't let anybody touch it. I keep it for you, senor. That a boy, Shorty. That a boy. Muchacha, two strangers, Americanos. Man and lady, they keep looking for someone. Uh, A man and girl, senor. Man very drunk, I think. He's coming here. Hey, you, sit up. Don't touch him. Shut up. I'm looking for a friend of mine. He's, uh... Well, what do you know? Hello, Mr. Gagan. Hey, Marjorie, in here. Hey, you hit him good, muchacha. Lock the door. We will leave the other way. Si, si. Senor, we must leave here. Lean on me. I help you. Please, senor, please. I can't go any further. A few steps more, senor, please. Where are you taking me? There's noise. Too many people. We'll find the bus station. And the bus is here, right here. Nobody's in it yet. You can rest, rest in the bus, senor. Bus? The steps. Try get in the bus. There. Now, you sit down now. You feel better. Yeah. Where? Where are you going? I'd buy tickets. Then we can stay here. Nobody would find me. Senor Gagan, Senor, can you hear me? Please, you must listen. Oh. Nobody in the bus station, only a janitor sweeping up. The ticket seller is watching the parade. You must stay here, Senor. I'll find you. I'll get the tickets and I won't be long, Senor. She's gone. I can't stay here. Gotta find Hugo. Find Hugo. Gotta find the hotel. Third floor. Gotta find the hotel. But he was in the bus. Now, where did he go? Where? I sweep the floor. He come in here. He asked, where is the hotel? That's all I know. Which way did he go? Into the street. 
I don't know. So many crowds. Senor! Senor! Now, wait a minute, Mr. Hugo. We did everything... Shut up. I told you not to come back till you found Gagan. Look at you. Five of you. How many more men do I need to find him? If you saw the mob of people on he the He had street. a knife in his back, didn't he? How far could he get? Well, which... Which one of you is Frank Hugo? Well, look who's here. Mr. Gagan, Mr. Gagan, please. See who that is in the hall, Dutton. You want Mr. Gagan? He's right here, sister. He made a mistake. He's sick. He should not be here. Hugo. Don't you recognize me, Gagan? I'm Hugo. I'll handle him, Frank. Put your I'll... gun away. Don't you see he's out on his feet? Sit him down. Now, who's this girl? You, what's the matter with him? He cannot remember. He's hurt. Okay, Gagan. Why did you want to see me? The check. Yeah, yeah, the check. You want to sell it to me? Uh, 30 grand. Have you got the check with you? Help him find it, boys. Money. Sure, Gagan, sure. Lots of money. He hasn't got the check. It's not in his wallet. Pockets are clean, Frankie. What happened to it, Gagan? What did you do with the check? I... I don't know. What do you know about it? I don't know nothing. You do know. What were you doing with him? He's sick. Please, he's sick. Gagan, wake up. Listen, Gagan, you hid the check because you were afraid you wouldn't get your money. But I have the money. Now, where's the check? I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe I can help him remember. Okay, go ahead. No, no, please. He's... Shut up, you. Where is it, Gagan? He don't know. He lost it. Where did he lose it? I don't know. Then how do you know he lost it? Maybe she'll talk for you, Tommy. You see this cigarette, sister? You know what I'm going to do with it? Unless you start remembering things, I'm going to... Why don't you help him, Mr. Hugo? You're the one who knows how to treat a lady. Rats, maybe you don't like knocking on doors, huh? This gun let me in. I can go wherever it takes me. Uh, Just keep your hands where I can see them, boys. Uh, If you don't mind, I better take your gun so we can talk nice and peaceful like. Yeah, that's better. Kagan tried to blackmail me. One of those haywire veterans tried to put the bite on me for 30 grand. And what's your bite, Hugo? Gagan. Gagan, get up, boy. I better help him, Curly. Senor, I help you, please. A little copper, huh? Government cop. It's all right, Gagan. I've been following you ever since you left the merry-go-round. Sorry I had to use you for bait, but I wanted to be in on it when you go try to wangle that check out of you. Need it bad for evidence. So you think there's a check, huh? Well, find it. I think it might have appeared in another few minutes, but I guess I couldn't wait. Ain't nice seeing folks pushed around. I guess you and the girl better come with me, Gagan. Go ahead, Gagan. Be a sucker. Sucker. You came here to pick up some easy money. Just as it's in your pocket, you walk out. You know what's going to happen, don't you? He's going to give you a lot of gas about duty and armor, fill you with fancy words like responsibility and patriotism. That's how he's going to get that check from you. I know where it is. I remember now. 30,000 bucks you could have. But no, he'll talk you out of it. Sure, I'll be sent to the pen. A lot of bucks that'll put in your pocket. You'll spend the rest of your life worrying about a job, a two-buck raise, a pension, and end up borrowing enough money to buy a hole in the ground to get buried in. All through you, going? Gagan, Gagan, I'll give you 100,000 for that check. I'll set you up for the rest of your life. 100,000, huh? Give me... Pila, give me that check. I keep it for you, senor. Here. Gagan? No. Take it, Rats. Take it. Thanks. Then get over, Hugo. Of course, you can skip town if you want to try. I'll let the state troopers worry about that. Take his arm, girlie. We better get this fellow to the hospital. What's the matter with you, Gagan? After a week in the hospital, I think you'd eat like a horse. I'm not hungry. Two bucks worth of breakfast going to part. What's fretting you, son? It ain't that hat full of dough you promised Pancho, is it? No, no. He never expected to get it anyway. Well, it couldn't be that hundred thousand you turned down. Fat chance I had of collecting that with you around. Mm. Where's the kid? What kid? Well, that little mouse with the big eyes. You wouldn't be fretting about her now, would you? Why should I worry about her? All I got to do is to say goodbye, and that's the end of that. All you got to do is say goodbye. Any uh, particular way you're going to do it? I'll tell her. Sure. But what will you say? That's my department, Retz. She's over at the merry-go-round with Pancho. I'll see you at the bus station. Oh, I'll uh, I'll go along with you. All you're going to do is say goodbye. All right, then come along. Maybe she isn't even there. Then you won't have to say anything. That'll make you happy. She'll be there. You don't know dames. Even a kid like that, they like to get their hooks in you. You don't know what kind of a fuss they make. Mm. 
Well, looks like this is your lucky day. There's Pancho, but I don't see the kid. Mr. Gagin, amigo. Hiya, Pancho. Buenos dias, howdy. Hi. Uh, glad to see you. I, uh, just come over to say so long. Oh, so long. Oh, it's a sad word. But you make me happy if it's not too long, eh? Yeah. Yeah, and about that money, oh, I... Oh, forget money. Merry-go-round, give me all the bucks I want. We same kind of peoples, you and me. We both born for to be broke. <laughs> <laughs> Do me a favor, will you, Pancho? Sure. If Pila shows up, why, you tell her that I... Oh, Pila uh... is here. Hey, you, skinny. She very bashful. Hide behind pink horse. Hello. Hello, senor. Well, I... I got out of the hospital, and I'm going home now. And I, uh... Well, I... Did you have a good time at the fiesta? Si, senor. I just dropped by to thank Pancho and you, too. And I'm much obliged for that little doll you gave me. You remember? Si, I remember. Well, I want you to take it back now. Here. And, uh... Remember me to your grandmother. She'd be glad to see you. Lots of people will be glad to see you. Well, what I... What I'm trying to... What I mean is that... Goodbye, senor. What? Well, say goodbye to the lady. Oh. Yeah. Goodbye. Come on, Rats. Let's get out of here. Hey, he kissed your cheek, huh? Me, he just shake my hand. Pila, Pila, what happened with you and this American? Oh, what happened? Keep yeah, so, you know? Pila is big shot now, eh? You don't leave her alone no oh, more. Pila, don't leave her alone. Aye, now Pila, you, Pila, you Pila, won't Pila, want Pila. for to be Pila's friend, eh? Now she's very important person, huh? Okay, okay, I tell you. When he first sees me, he asks, which way to the Lafando Hotel? I say, I will show you the hotel. The next day, he gave me some money, and I fixed my hair another way to see if he liked me better, like human beings. Oh. Pero él es malos. También el hombre que viene a la cantina. Pero a él le pequé en the head with a bottle of beer like so. Oh. <laughs> hey, she laughing. First time. Look, Pila, she laughing. <laughs> I think I go home now and tell grandmother. Adios. Goodbye. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll bring our stars back for a curtain call. From now until December 25th, girls all over the country will be giving hints to Santa on what to leave under the Christmas tree. What's on your list, Libby? Well, I love pretty undies, so I'm asking Santa for some longer slips for my new longer dresses and for some frilly nighties in those heavenly new colors. This year, there are gorgeous silk things in the stores again, as well as nice rayons. But like everything else, they cost more than they used to. Mm, That's true. So some girls may get only one slip for Christmas when they'd hoped for three. But they can make that one pretty slip equal three. All they need do is wash their lingerie with gentle, lukewarm Lux suds. No strong soap, no hot water, no rough handling. Slips washed the Lux way stay lovely three times as long. That's really true. A well-known laboratory proved it by washing different types of lingerie two different ways. Those washed the wrong way soon looked faded and drab. But those washed the Lux way stayed lovely three times as long. So you can have Christmas all year round if you let Lux Flakes play Santa. Have three pretty slips or nighties for the price of one. Because Lux undies stay new-looking three times as long. We return now to William Keeley. For a very exciting ride on Ride the Pink Horse, all our thanks to the three stars of the picture... Bob Montgomery, Wanda Hendricks, and Thomas Gomez. (laughs) Bob, you're the first person to appear in Hollywood direct from the royal wedding in England. Yeah, I guess I am at that, Bill. Were you actually at the wedding ceremony, Bob? Well, we didn't go into the Abbey itself, but we did see the procession to and from the Abbey. Did you attend any of the festivities connected with the wedding? Oh, yes. Yes. Command performance was the reason for my going. There was a combination of American and British stars. Bob Hope, Loretta Young, Alexis Smith, Vivian Lee, Larry Olivier, David Niven, and myself. 
And you met the king and queen. Yeah. Yeah, we were presented to them afterwards at a reception in a sort of private lobby in the theater. Did you see much of the British people themselves, Bob, and the way they're living? Well, I was there, as you know, just when the band went on, on pleasure driving. And that was a hard blow to them. I guess they've had plenty of hard blows. Yes, plenty. And it was unbelievable to me, the shortages and the restrictions that they suffer. And yet, I can promise you, they aren't complaining. Their one thought is to help themselves get back to normal. Yes, their spirit's magnificent. But to come back to this country, more specifically this stage, what's on the agenda for next week, Bill? Next Monday night, we prepare for the holiday spirit with a bright and sparkling comedy from RKO and two of this theater's favorite stars, both from the picture, Jimmy Stewart and Jane Wyman in Magic Town. The play, the play's tailor-made for Jane and Jimmy, Bill. Yes, with Jimmy Stewart as the young man, almost too smart for his own good, who not only becomes enamored of a small-town girl, but turns the whole town into bedlam. Sounds awfully entertaining, Mr. Keeley. We'll be listening, Bill. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night. and good night. thanks from all of us. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents James Stewart and Jane Wyman in Magic Town. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. With fats and oils still critically short everywhere in the world, it's doubly important that we save used kitchen fats. The Department of Agriculture asks every housewife to continue to save and turn in every drop of used fat as long as the present situation continues. Reuse your fats as often as you wish. But when they're useless to you, they're still good for industry. There's money waiting for you for every pound you turn in. Many stores are now paying higher prices for used fats. Wanda Hendricks appeared by arrangement with Paramount Pictures, whose current release is Golden Earring, starring Ray Milland and Marlena Dietrich. Thomas Gomez will soon be seen in the Universal International release, Casbah. Heard in our cast tonight were Alan Reed as Hugo, Bill Johnstone as Retz, Francis Robinson as Marjorie, and Paul Conrad, Robert Griffin, Cliff Clark, Don Morrison, Alma Lawton, Alvina Temple, Bernard Phillips, Ed Emerson, George Neese, and Eddie Marr. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is rebroadcast to our men and women overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This program has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes, the safe, gentle care recommended 33 to 1 by makers of nice washables. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Magic Town with James Stewart and Jane Wyman. Pepsodent won by 3 to 1. Yes, by an overwhelming average of 3 to 1. Families throughout America who compared toothpastes they were using at home preferred new Pepsodent with Irium over any other brand they tried. They said new Pepsodent toothpaste tastes better, makes breath cleaner, makes teeth brighter. Yes, with families who made comparison tests, Pepsodent won by three to one. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Magic Town with James Stewart and Jane Wyman. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.